This is Mark Strassman, reporter with Broadband Wireless Access World. We're about to speak to Diana Neff, who is the uh, CIO of Philadelphia. Welcome to the first remote video interview program on Utopia Media's Broadband Wireless Access World. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. Um, why don't you tell us first how the broadband wireless program fits into the overall context of uh, Philadelphia Mayor John F. Street's agenda for the city? Sure. Uh, Mayor Street, when he came into office in uh, 2000, identified neighborhood transformation as a cornerstone program uh, for his administration. And wireless worked wonderfully in supporting that program. Uh, we will be working to do economic development and neighborhood community enhancement, working with our nonprofits, our business district, uh, and um, the school district uh, to bring wireless access to all neighborhoods. We believe that that will help reduce the cost of telecommunications for our small and disadvantaged businesses and make internet access affordable for everyone in the city of Philadelphia. Okay, what, what role did you play in originating and carrying this project forward so far? Well, as the CIO, one of the things that I do is to monitor emerging technology. And wireless has been one that I've been watching uh, for the last several years. Uh, and with the advent of the FCC's approval of the unregulated portion of the spectrum, the IEEE's approval of the 802.11b standard, um, the convergence of all of this came together. And I said, you know, this is a good time. We've got the mesh networking capability. We can do outdoor roaming, which the city needs. And it also benefits a lot of the programs. The school districts were was, um, wire, unwiring their campuses. Uh, we have a very large school district. We have 270 schools by June of 2005. 200 of those schools will be wireless. But they were missing that last mile, being able to reach out to the parents in the home, uh, to connect parents and students with uh, tutorial information, with educational programs, and to be able to communicate with teachers and the administration. So a lot of things came. Yeah. So a lot of things came, came together. together. Absolutely. What? I put together a briefing paper for the mayor, and we moved on. Oh, so that led to the establishment of the Wireless Philadelphia Executive Committee, right? Uh, we actually did a pilot to see if what the interest was by the community uh, in uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. So in June of 2004, we launched our first hotspot at Love Park in downtown Philadelphia. Um, in the first two months, over 1,200 people had registered to use the site. Uh, it was no cost if you didn't have to register. And with that, the mayor then made the commitment uh, to bring together the major stakeholders in the community. He selected 17 people to participate on the Wireless Philadelphia Executive Committee. And did, were you the chair of that committee? I was. And, w br and, am. <laughs> and br briefly, what did it do to collect uh, more information and consider options? Well, we held uh, 13 focus groups. Uh, we met with the major uh, community of interest groups. Each of the executive committee members was responsible for bringing together a group of people in their sphere of influence. Uh, and then we're working with Temple University. Uh, they worked with us to, to bring in a facilitator. We held the focus groups, got the community's input on what was important to them, what they were looking for, how wireless might help them for their concerns, for their needs. Uh, and from that, then the committee worked to put together a business how, how many people would you say participated overall within the city? We had about 250 people in the focus group, and then we did surveys for about which uh, 5,000 people responded to the survey. And w what were their main concerns or desires for a wireless Philadelphia? Uh, affordability and cost. Uh, they wanted to make sure that the city was heavily involved in the project to get it launched, but then they wanted uh, is to move into uh, not being government regulated. Um, they were concerned about obsolescence, um, but 
they all thought that having high-speed broadband access at an affordable rate was important um, to have in Philadelphia. Okay. Now there there were, there arose in the midst of this process uh, some legislation, H, uh, House Bill 30 in the Pennsylvania Legislature, that might have interfered with your efforts. What was the story behind that, and where do things stand now uh, for Philadelphia and the other cities in Pennsylvania in that regard? Well, that was an interesting challenge. Uh, one that we knew they were looking at rewriting uh, the Pennsylvania Telecommunication Act. Uh, it had been dormant for about 18 months, and in November, literally in the last day of the legislative session, the bill came out of the House with amendments that included prohibiting political subdivisions, i.e. cities, counties, bureaus, boroughs, townships, from participating in providing wireless broadband for C. Uh, so we mounted a grassroots campaign. We got all the executive committee members to reach out to their groups of interest, all the people that have participated in our focus groups and our surveys, and asked them to contact the governor's office. We had over 3,000 people call or write or send emails to the governor's office asking them to allow Wireless Philadelphia to move forward because of the importance to uh, Philadelphia. They also wanted the bill um, not to be approved. Uh, we won the battle, but lost the war. Philadelphia did get its exemption. We got a waiver that exempts Philadelphia from the legislation and any sort of litigation. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the governor did the bill, and it went into uh, law. Uh, the governor of Pennsylvania used to be the mayor of Philadelphia. Did that figure into this at all? Well, I, you know, the, the governor's role is, is broader. He's looking at the uh, benefit for all of the state. Um, it doesn't hurt. Uh, and I think that what really swayed him, though, was the passion behind the people that were committed to wireless Philadelphia and understanding the benefits of that program and how it can help Philadelphia neighborhoods be revitalized. Uh, and then, obviously, um, the school connection, both Mayor Street and the governor are, are passionate about family and children and education, and they saw this as a benefit, um, and so he helped us negotiate with Verizon to get the waiver and also the extension from any criminal litigation. Did, in fact, that effort uh, help coalesce Philadelphia around the, its, its desire to have a, wire, a wireless uh, rollout? Um, yes, I think the, the community was coalescing, and uh, we would have gotten to the same place anyway, but this really brought it to the forefront, uh, and people were very passionate about it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the politics of it. Uh, has your uh, executive committee uh, completed its work and uh, submitted recommendations to Mayor Street? Yes, we did complete the business plan. Uh, we have submitted that to the Mayor's office for review. Uh, and they have been looking at us, uh, asking questions, talking to other people, getting input. When, when do you expect some kind of announcement from the mayor? <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> every week that I'm going to have the announcement. It really, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, it, it, everybody uh, is committed to this. We're forward to working on getting the request for proposals to build the network uh, in order. Uh, it's just it's getting it on the mayor's schedule, making sure that he's 100 percent comfortable and ready to move forward. It, it is I <laughs> hold it just a second. Hello, I'm doing an interview. Can I help you? Right. Could you call me back in about 40 minutes, and I'll be glad to talk to you. That would be great. Thanks very much. Bye. Sorry for the interruption. We've got multimedia here. Um, it, is the government structured in Philadelphia that what the mayor decides is what will happen, or does the city council or uh, other groups need to uh, uh, coalesce with him as well? Uh, it really does depend on the structure that is elected uh, and what is created. Um, 
to be able to, your contract has to be approved by council. Um, the creation of wireless Philadelphia can be done from the mayor's office. So there will be further involvement of the governmental process as well as the public in deciding what the final form of the uh, rollout is. Well, as, uh, this, we're looking at the city being a user of the network, uh, we would then contract with Wireless Philadelphia uh, to use the infrastructure that is built, and that would require um, if it's your contract. Okay, what are the range of arrangements that might be uh, forthcoming in terms of total ownership of the system and its operation by the city to the city providing infrastructure for private ISPs to maybe community ownership? What were the options that were considered as, as business models for the system? Sure, we looked at a number of models. We did uh, a best practices uh, analysis with the Vanderbilt Temple University uh, worked with us um, to look at what I think we looked at like 120 different entities across the United States and a couple of them outside of the United States on what their structure was, what was the plus and minuses. Uh, but we really narrowed it down to five primary options and then hybrids of those options. Uh, we looked at total government ownership. Uh, and you know what the, the plus and minuses were there. We looked at free net. Uh, you know how could you structure it so that it would be free to everybody and you didn't have any problem then with uh, the any political issues uh, around that. And the, you know the objection was that it wasn't sustainable if you're using great foundations. It's hard to build an ongoing uh, sustainable organization. Uh, we looked at um, private sector ownership. Uh, a concern there was that part of what Philadelphia is doing is building in support for um, digital divide, which means we're trying to get as many as 10,000 computers into homes with training and education for the program and generating the revenues to allow us to be able to do that from the fees that would be done. So that was going to be uh, accomplishable by doing it just private sector. Um, we looked at um, uh, the public utility model that you've seen in Chaska, Minnesota, where they, they created governments now um, utilities, some own and operate all of their own utilities. Others have water, sewer, or gas, electric. But, um, we decided that that wasn't the direction that we wanted to go uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, and then we looked at um, the nonprofit uh, and how that might work. And then we looked at the cooperative wholesale uh, and the um, the ability to, to build the infrastructure and to then let others have access to it and use it for a fee. So, and that could be government owned or that could be nonprofit owned. Uh, and then, you know, what would the government's role be as a user and a regulator? And we looked at all of those different models that came up with some criteria charts. Uh, we spent a lot of time at the executive committee level going through that, looking at the policies and legal regu regulations around each of those models. We selected one, and we've made that recommendation uh, to the mayor. Uh, he is now going through that, uh, looking at the committee's recommendations. Okay. Say a little bit about the financial and other benefits for the city and for the people in the city that uh, you're trying to move forward with your plan. Sure. We, we created a business model um, that would allow us to do multiple things. We would make it cost neutral to the city. We would not use city funds to build or maintain this network. Uh, we, that was a, you know, a, a given in the mayor's instructions to the committee was to look at a sustainable model of the cost neutral for the city. Uh, so we, we looked at how, how you can do that. Uh, we looked at the needs of universities and our nonprofits that wanted to use the infrastructure to the university to their students and faculty. Um, we also had a goal of cost lessons was one of the concerns that came out of our focus. How do you, you know, are you investing in a technology that's obsolete in two, three, four years from now? So we worked with organizations like Intel to validate uh, how long they thought Wi-Fi, WiMAX, 
where the timing were on those uh, as we put our models together. Uh, we looked at being able to generate enough cash flow will allow us to upgrade and keep the system um, viable uh, and within four to seven years if we have to replace the whole system to generate enough working capital to do so. And then again, the primary goal was to generate um, $5 million in what they call free cash flow, that which is left over after you pay all your bills and you build your working capital, uh, to be able to fund the social program, the getting of computers into homes, the training and the education, the working with the business district and the minority chambers on uh, working with small and disadvantaged businesses on how to create an effective website and then to get it recognized uh, on the internet. So, so, th so this is really part of a, a whole set of policies to bring e everyone into the uh, internet and its opportunities. Absolutely. You know, we we're passionate about the knowledge economy of the future. You must be able to be an active participant in this digital environment. And uh, if you can't, you leave another generation of people behind that will not be able to compete effectively for jobs. When high-tech companies are looking where they're going to locate, they look for an educated populace. They look for um, telecommunications. It's one of the checklists of things they look at. And we believe that it's important for Philadelphia to stay and, and be a vibrant city of the 21st century uh, to, have this, to have our populace knowledgeable and trained in how to use the internet. What do you expect the impact will be of Philadelphia as a precedent or a role model for other cities? And do you think that the competitive advantage that you're trying to establish for yourself might uh, be reduced if more people see what you're doing, see that it's working, and want to do it themselves? Oh, absolutely. Uh, even before we built anything uh, other than our pilot areas, um, we have seen um, a, lot, a lot of people emulate with what Delta is doing. And you can look at your major um, cities across the United States, LA, um, San Francisco, uh, Chicago, Houston. They're all looking at or doing wireless projects today. Uh, and a lot of that stems from the work that we've done here in Philadelphia. We believe when our business plan is uh, released, that it will be a model that many other communities can use and build on, uh, take what works for them, uh, see you know, some of the research that we've done. Uh, so yes, we think it will really be uh, a blueprint for the future. We've had inquiries from uh, universities and foundations about writing you know, a two or three year history on what impact that this does have. It is new. Uh, you know, we've made some assumptions about its impact on economic uh, vitality, uh, on helping to overcome the digital divide, and they're very interested from the social aspect of it, of tracking that and seeing what the results are. So, so you're going to be pretty thoroughly studied by both uh, journalists and uh, social scientists as you go forward. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, it's always amazing to me that uh, the world interest that has been on this and the recognition that Philadelphia has gotten uh, from being involved in this process. Do, do you also expect that businesses in Philadelphia and the government might benefit or profit even from being the pioneers here so that other cities might look to you for uh, expertise or consulting in how to do for themselves what you're going to be doing first for Philadelphia? Yes, um, you know, again, I've listed out 25 to 50 different cities and counties contacting me and the Indian nations about what's going on and how uh, this might uh, work in, in their community. Um, yes, we definitely work. Say, say something briefly about the about three different aspects of the system and how it's going to work. First, about education. What kind of benefits, what kind of projects do you envision that the educational community will be able to institute with a, a, an unwired Philadelphia? Well, the, as I had mentioned, the school districts are unwiring their campuses. They have actually developed um, materials, educational materials, to reach out into the home. 
Um, we have six different pilots, one square mile areas uh, in the city, and the high school, the, uh, the, the school district has identified a school, a middle school or high school, and they're selecting 40 to 50 families uh, to participate in this. Uh, some simple things like parents being able to have access to a child's homework, um, access to the teacher administration, and it's convenient for them. They've also developed tutorial information, academic information uh, that the students and the parents can work on at home. So, you know, there's a good synergy uh, between the schools and the city on this project. Uh, they're doing the work to get the meaningful information to reach out into the home. We're making sure that the infrastructure is there and it will help them meet that need by having a low cost, affordable access. Okay, a second point is what the city itself, the city government, is going to be able to do, how it may be able to save money, improve services, offer services it couldn't uh, offer before in an unwired Philadelphia. Sure, I mean, that's uh, um, very important to the city. As, as our budget um, continues to reduce, we need to reduce the cost of service delivery to our constituents. We believe that by um, having wireless pneumatic access in the field for our health inspectors, our building inspectors, um, our assessors, our social workers, and we'll be able to reduce the cost, our telecommunications cost in the second or third year by as much as $2 million a year. We've done studies that have shown that for field inspectors, we can return two hours per day of productivity by them having access to Say you've got a water main break, do engineering drawings in the field, or you're doing an inspection and you need to know what other violations and permits are outstanding. Uh, that, this can be a very effective tool. We're reevaluating all 600,000 parcels in Philadelphia. You know, you can either bring in lots of people and um, have them manually do this, or you can use the technology. And this has to be done by 2007, so the timing of the network works very well. Okay. Uh, what about commuting, traffic, traffic congestion? What uh, uh, effect do you expect that uh, unwiring uh, Philadelphia might have uh, on those issues? Well, we um, hope, and, and we've had some experience by just the electronic bill payment capability that we have on our website today, that people will be able to transact their business online instead of in line, not having to come down. Um, but I think what's even more interesting is the potential for what, how this uh, technology can help in the transportation. Uh, if you're a, a commuter and Philadelphia is a, a big commuter city, if you're waiting for a train or your train is delayed, if you have wireless access, you could be productive while you're waiting during that time. And we heard from our focus groups this is a great interest. Uh, you know, in our, in our buses, if you want to know where the, the buses are and um, having more visibility at, at major bus stations. Do you envision uh, that the system, uh, do you envision that the system will allow commuters on buses and trains to have Wi-Fi access on the trains and buses? It would be a collaboration with uh, SEPTA, which is the Southeast Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. Uh, but if the infrastructure is there, yes, we're building support that. We've heard, <coughs> we've heard from um, transportation uh, companies uh, that they're interested for their trucks to be able to have access, or if you're a delivery service company, to be able to have um, the uh, your uh, delivery people have access to this network while they're out so that they can effectively track where they are, what's being delivered. What about public safety, uh, first responders, homeland security issues? How does that fit in with uh, the city's needs and plans in that area? Uh, they will not be the first group for me to go wireless um, because we have a lot of need in our other departments. But we are looking at that. They have security questions. We're working with them on that. Um, they need to be able, in the case of an emergency, maybe to take over the system. How does that impact if you have multiple users on the network? But we're working through those questions and issues. Um, we expect to get a great backup system. You know, we have an 800 megahertz system, which is used, a radio system for the first responders. If you need a lot of uh, 
data and not voice traffic, um, the wireless would be perfect for that. So yes, we're very much talking and working with them. They won't be the first group up. Will the city also have a plan to encourage more people to telecommute, to work from home, uh, in order to relieve traffic congestion? Um, that really will be a business by business. Uh, we're certainly going to do education and communication um, to, to make people aware of this, businesses aware of that. But it's just more than the individual having access. It's the company saying, yes, that's a part of the telecommunication. But yes, we would encourage that uh, and uh, we'll work with those corporations that have programs. Uh, it occurred to me, and this is partially facetious and partially serious, that as you can see, we're, com we're, we're communicating between Los Angeles and Philadelphia uh, on a reasonably good level with, with a video uh, system, uh, and I'm wondering whether the uh, city of Philadelphia, as part of its uh, uh, rollout of this Wi-Fi, might want to get a site license for the whole city for the site speed program we're using here so that everyone could use it, uh, give it away to the poor, charge people what they can afford, and make uh, uh, Philadelphia not just the most unwired city, but the most uh, video conference city in the country. Well, I'm often for getting the uh, infrastructure up and running and the program solid, and, uh, but it's something uh, you know, that uh, is certainly open, and there might be a group that would Okay. What what's been the most frustrating aspect of this whole project for you, if there has been one? Um, timing. Uh, you know, I have this grand vision, and, and I want to keep people marching at uh, 110 uh, miles an hour, and the you know, government doesn't want to work that way. Okay. What's been the most satisfying aspect of it? The the embracing of working with the community and seeing how this truly impacts people's lives. I have just been blown away um, by the, the comments and the talking to uh, particularly our, our low income and disadvantaged about how they want to embrace and uh, in our pilot areas from the already impacted their lives. So in fact, while it's it's primarily at its core a techno technology project, it, it really has involved human uh, interaction and human relations at a at a, an increased level as well. Absolutely, and you know, uh, I am a technologist, um, but the guy in government today is because of the passion for how we can help people, uh, and then being able to use technology. Uh, to meet those goals has been wonderful. I mean, Mayor Street's program about neighborhood transformation is what drew me to Philadelphia. And then to be able to take a technology like this and marry it up to that and see the positive impact on people's lives is been wonderful. What, what's your role going to be going forward in the implementation of the program? Um, obviously, I will shepherd it. Uh, and uh, you know, once we announce what the model, governance model is going to be going forward. Uh, on what this finalized at a minimum, I'll be involved uh, at the uh, board level and helping in that direction. Okay. And uh, let's close by talking about uh, uh, how soon we might be able to hear from the mayor uh, a and uh, talk to you again so that you can reveal some of the details and talk about how that's going to work. My goal is by the end of the month, um, you know, we're, we're working through the governance structures model uh, and on uh, all the issues we have. We're reviewing uh, the request for proposal to, to, to build the network uh, because of the time that we're going to release both of those at the same time. Um, there are questions that have to be finalized on that. So my goal is still at the end of the month, a bit close to the middle of April. Uh, assuming, let's let's say it's the middle of say uh, uh, April fifteenth, uh, the the two big stories are everyone's rushing to pay their taxes and the city announces its plans. W when do you think parts or all of it could be up and running? I'm sorry, uh, Mark, uh, you broke up on that one. Uh, assuming, uh, l let's just say it's April fifteenth before the announcement. When do you expect the system could be parts of it or all of it could be up and running? Well, if, if we get um, launched and the RFP is released in that time frame, we would hope to get all the contract negotiations completed 
July, um, the first part of July, and they have the actual construction starting in August, probably late August. So, so the so the mayor's holiday greetings at the so the mayor's holiday greetings at the end of December could go out over this network. Okay, I want to thank you very much for talking to us today on uh, our program, and uh, look forward to talking to you more and more of the people in Philadelphia and having them talk to each other and having a whole lot more telecommunications going on. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too.